Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to track double entry accounting records in your database. We'll talk about what double entry is, why you should use it, and I'll show you how to properly store this information in your Microsoft Access database. This is an expert level video. Expert is a level that I put between beginner and developer, so there's no VBA programming required. But it's you know, you're gonna have to know a little bit more than the basics. So there's it's some functions and stuff, and some moving parts and molecular structures and things like that. So it's not for the absolute beginners, but you don't have to be a developer either. Today's question comes from Ethan in Boulder, Colorado, one of my Platinum members. Ethan says I enter in all of my daily transactions on my Access database using the check register template that you created in a previous video. It is very helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. How would I track transactions using double entry accounting in multiple accounts? For example, if I pay my Discover card, can I put a credit on that account and have a debit show up for my checking account? Well, yes, Ethan, that's definitely possible. We'll have to add accounts, an account ID and an account table to the database. And then I'll show you how to put the transactions in properly. Now, for those of you who don't know what double entry accounting is, it's basically a bookkeeping system in which every transaction gets recorded in two accounts. And I didn't know anything about this when I started my first business. I figured you got a checking account, right? That's your, that's an account. Okay. But in double entry, you've got two transactions for each transaction, right? You got an entry in your debit account and an entry in your credit account. All right. One's your assets, one's your liability, and they should always be in balance. Let's talk prerequisites. The database that I'm going to use for this video is my check register database. It's from the free tech help database. So you don't have to pay for anything. It's completely free. Now, if you're a gold member, you can download this database from my website. If not, you'll have to build it yourself. That's how it works. All right. I, the, the database, the, the idea for the database is absolutely free. You can watch me and you can build along with me. Okay. If you're a gold member, you can download the file. But honestly, you'll learn this stuff better if you build the database along with me. Okay, so that's actually a benefit that I'm making you build it. But if you haven't built it, here's the link right down here, right? I'll put it right down in the description below the text. You can go click on it and watch this and then come on back. And it goes without saying, if you're building that database, you should know relationships. Go watch my relationship video if not. And we're going to build a relational combo box. Go watch this video as well. These are all free videos. They're on my website. They're on my YouTube channel. If you don't know how to do any of this stuff, go watch this stuff first, then come on back. All right, since I am a gold member on my own website, which is a good thing, I'm going to download the template and drop it on my desktop, which is a trusted folder. I'm going to open it up. Now, this isn't a standard version of my tech help database that I've been using for the last couple of years. This one's a little older, so we don't have the main menu and all that good stuff in it, but we got the one form, the check register form. Now, this only works with one account. All right, so the first thing we have to do is we have to add another account to the database. We have to add the ability to track multiple accounts. So what does that tell you? We need an account table. So we'll go to create, table design. Let's do account ID. That'll be our auto number and an account name, short text. Not just name, remember name is a reserved word, okay? And you could put whatever other information you want in here, your account number, the bank's address, phone number, your account rep, I don't care. For the purposes of class, that's all you need. All right, save this as account T, my account table. Primary key, yeah, sure. Okay, let's put some data in it. All right, you're gonna put both your debit and your credit accounts in here. So for example, um, your credit accounts might be like Amex, uh, PayPal credit, uh, Discover, Actually, I should put PayPal credit because I also have a PayPal debit account and a regular PayPal account. There's a lot that PayPal has. Okay, so those are the credit accounts. All right, now keep in mind, these accounts can also be used for debits too. So for example, if you pay a vendor, let's say your vendor is your uh, electrician, okay, and you pay him with your Amex, then the Amex gets the debit and the, the, the electrician gets the credit. So that doesn't really matter which one's which. It's just one account's gonna be for debits, one's gonna be for credits. You can take one from one account and put it in the other account. All right, then we got, let's say, uh, ABC checking and maybe uh, one, two, three checking, you got different checking accounts. Okay, doesn't matter. All right, save it, close it. 
Now we need to weigh, we need to weigh, huh? We need a way to pick an account for each of these transactions. And in fact, I'm gonna start from scratch. So whatever, um, whatever transactions are in the check register right now, let's just delete them. If you have ones you wanna keep, then you can just go through and put accounts on all of them. I'm gonna start over from scratch, okay? So in the check register table, we have to put an account ID in here. And that's gonna be a number of type long integer. That's our foreign key, okay? Now, just as a matter of style, I like to keep all of my IDs up toward the top. So that's gonna go right there, okay? Save it, close it. And now if you open up the account table, or the check register table, excuse me, you'll see there's our account ID. And it defaults to zero, that's fine. You don't necessarily have to have an account for everything, but it's a good idea, okay? <laughs> You can make that required or any other value, whatever you want to do. All right, let's add this account ID as a combo box on the check register form. So we're going to come out here. I'm going to slide this stuff over to the right. In fact, let's make this a little bit smaller so I got some room to work here. We'll move that over like that. We're going to grab all of this. Actually, let's check number. Hold on. Check number. I almost never use check number. I almost never write checks anymore. It's all electronic stuff. Slide that over so we got some room in here to drop the account. All right, where's my combo box? Right there, combo box, drop it in the detail section. The wizard starts up. This is a good wizard. I want the combo box to get the values from the table or query, y'all. This is a relational combo box. That's why I wanted you to watch that, right? Okay, what table has the list of values? My account T table. Bring over both of those fields, right? That's our bound column and that's what we wanna see in the box. Next. We're gonna sort it by the account name. Next, that's what it's gonna look like. Our key column is hidden. Remember, if this is based off a query, you don't see that. You gotta manually re-shrink it, right? Like that. We're gonna hide it. Next, that just sets the width equal to zero. All right, we're gonna pick that value and store it in the account ID. So this combo box is now bound to the account ID field in the check register table. Next. What label would you like? Doesn't matter. We're going to delete it anyways. Hit OK. There's the label. Click Delete. Boop. You're gone. I made that sound effect myself. Are you impressed? All right. We're going to slide this over like that. We're going to bring all these guys back to the left a little bit. Okay. Bring that bottom up. We're going to copy this label. Or you can cheat. You can do my little cheat. Just make this label bigger and go space, 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 and go account. That's up to you. I cheat a lot. Uh, let's fix our tab order while we're at it because remember that's the last object added to the tab order. So it's gonna be last. So it's gonna go tab, 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 tab. So just click here, go to tab order, uh, go to auto order. And it's right about this point every time I build a form that I re re realize that that's combo 16. That's okay. Hit okay, come in here, double click. The wizard doesn't ask you for a name. It's one of my pet peeves with access. I hate that. Change this to account. Combo. I don't call this account ID. I like to call it account combo because sometimes in code it makes a difference if it's a text box with an ID in it versus a combo box. You want to know you can handle it differently. Again, it's just a, a preferential style of mine. All right. Let's save it, close it, and reopen it. All right. Let's put a couple transactions in. First, let's say we paid our Amex bill. Okay. Amex tab, no check number. It's electronic. The check date. Well, yeah, we could have this default to today if you want to. That's not a bad idea. Let's go in here, design view, check date. Now, one thing I did notice when I built this earlier, I used the MDYY format. I don't do that anymore. This is this this template's three years old. I'm gonna put short date in there, and I use the ISO date standard. If you haven't watched this yet, go watch this. I use year, month, day now. It's universal. Uh, I got clients and students all over the world. And so a lot of my examples, especially that are US based where you go month, day, year, they get messed up, the code doesn't work. If you, if everybody's on the same date format, I have a mission in life to make everybody in the world use this date format. <laughs> it, it's better for computers, it's better for people. I started writing this on my checks and stuff. People look at me like I'm weird, but, <laughs> but go watch this video if you wanna learn more. It's a Windows setting actually. All right, so we're going to set that to short date, and we're going to make the default value equals today's date. If you want now in there, that's fine. Now we'll give you the date and time. All right, let's close that back up, open up the check register again. And notice this one didn't get a date. Why? Because the record already existed. Default value only goes into new records. So let's say this one was 4-1. The nice thing about this is you can just type in the month and year, or month and day, and it still gives you the 
current year. Okay, so $150 was the debit. Oh, actually, this is the Amex. We're paying our Amex. So this is going to be a credit of $150 in our Amex account. All right. And that comes out of 123 checking on 41. And that's going to be $150 debit. And as you can see down here on the bottom, they balance out. $150 of the credits, $150 of the debits, zeros over here. And of course, with this, you can mark them clear when they clear. That's all covered in the other video. All right, next up, let's say you pay your Discover bill. All right, same thing. Credit, 250 And that came out of ABC checking, 250 There you go. Okay. All right, one more. Let's say you pay PayPal, PayPal credit. For seven hundred dollars, what wrong one again? Seven hundred dollars, and that's also out of one, two, three checking for seven hundred dollars. Okay, so you can see with double entry, you got to type in everything twice. I'm going to show you in the extended cut how to get around that. Um, but if you want to see just all of one particular account, just filter based on that account, right? Come over here, click on one, two, three checking, right click, equals one, two, three checking, and boom, there's all the transactions just for that guy. Right, you want to sort based on the date, right click, sort newest to oldest. Bam, you'll see your newest ones all up on top. Okay. Want to learn more about filtering? I cover a lot more in this video. So got lots of videos. When you're all done, you want to go back to all of them, just turn off the filter. There you go. And that, in a nutshell, is double entry accounting. For each debit, there is a credit. And this should equal out to zero down here when you're all done. Now, instead of having to type everything in twice, wouldn't it be nice if you could click a button, pick the debit account, pick the credit account, type in the amount, hit go, and have the database put both of those records in there for you? That would be pretty sweet, wouldn't it? Well, that is what we're going to do in the extended cut for the members. We're going to automatically add that second entry. We're going to enter the credit, the debit. We're going to put in the amount, hit Add transactions and boom, it'll put both of those records in there for us. That's in the extended cut for silver members and up, you get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's, a lot, there's hundreds of them. So there's lots and lots and lots of stuff to watch. Gold members can download these databases and you get access to my code vault with lots of cool stuff in it. All right, but that is your tech help for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. And don't forget the extended cut if you want to learn more about double entry accounting. Okay, bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted. So if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry. These free tech help videos are going to keep coming, 
As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.